Hi everyone. Um, in this video, we're going to go ahead, we're going to practice form and space. We're going to draw three spheres that are slowly disappearing into the distance and we're going to make them look 3D. For this exercise, you need a basic uh, drawing pencil um, and then you need uh, markers. You obviously need a sketchbook and we're just going to practice going dark to light and drawing three spheres with a consistent light source. Um, we will shade the background and then we'll add in more value with the markers. We're just gonna demonstrate how important it is to play with layering as we're slowly adding in values that kind of make the sphere look round. Uh, we will talk about how to make things more three-dimensional by changing the direction of the marker and how to add in shading techniques with the marker like stippling, which is a bunch of dots to kind of break up that white. I will emphasize that it's really important to leave a white space on the three spheres. Uh, and it's really important to also bring down the value of the entire background. If you bring down the value of the entire background, the sphere will be 3D. I will talk about the importance of drawing pen and adding different shading techniques on top, especially to that sphere that's in the front which will make it look more 3D. Uh, the pen should go in different directions and obviously be curvy. So make sure you're practicing going in different directions with your pen and marker. Um, we will bring up the value with some gouache and or whiteout. Um, don't trip if you don't have it. Hi guys, Rachel Colbert here. I teach art and other things. Today we are doing a art fundamental video on space and form. So in this video series, I review specific art concepts that are important and we practice them in our journal. I want you to start by lightly with a very light pressure in your pencil, drawing three spheres, circles actually, going from bigger to smaller. And you wanna draw a horizon line in the back, in the middle of the page. Obviously don't go through that sphere in the back. Um, make a little space for you to make any sort of notes. Your materials for this sketch stretch are going to be pencil and marker. White out will come in handy. So what I'm doing right now is I'm making a decision about where my light is gonna come from. That is the form part. So the secret to form is deciding where your light source is coming from. And I'm drawing a little arrow to myself and I'm putting the shadow in on the opposite side. My light is coming in from my left in this drawing and then the shadow is on the right. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to model the importance of warming up your hand before you draw. I've been teaching with ellipses for years and I, I think about that. I'm like, why do I like want my kids to be able to draw this uh, kind of line so bad? And it's because you need to be able to First of all, line creates form and you need to be comfortable with doing fast and curvy lines. Lines aren't just in one direction. Curvy lines come in useful too. And I'm also reviewing how it's important to practice line weight on a page that my two-year-old colored on, right? So you could do it anywhere in your sketchbook. This also demonstrates to all of my kids, all artists that you can have messy pages in your sketchbook. The sketchbook very much is a space of, you know, practice and mess. So returning back. Here we go. Um, I stopped and I said, oh my God, I haven't warmed up. And I want to show the kids to warm up because you need to warm up and practice your line quality because maybe you don't make line like that. Okay, now I'm going in with dark value. Let me grab a pencil. I'm using a Blick number two pencil in this video. They're easy, they're simple. Make sure they're sharp. And notice, first of all, how I keep changing the direction. 
sorry, I woke up. I keep changing the direction I'm holding my pencil and I'm going at the sphere from multiple directions. And the reason for that is the direction of your shading, the direction of your shading helps it to be round. If you go just one way, it's gonna feel flatter, but your shading determines how the lap, the, sorry, I can't talk, light, your shading determines how the light wraps around the sphere. So I'm going dark to light. Don't obsess about your circle looking perfect, by the way. And if you need to pause your video right now and kind of get to this space, please do that. Take a deep breath, breathe in, breathe out. So what's happening right now is, you know, a lot of students stop here. They're like, okay, I'm done. But they haven't put in those mid-tones yet. Coffee, excuse me. Um, you need to put in the mid-tones, okay? You need to put in the layers, go from di different directions. And then as you get closer to that light source where the arrow is hitting, as you get closer, you're gonna go lighter. Un poquito lighter. Light. And now I'm just feathering and I'm going different directions. And this is the first of three spheres. Now, in order to make this sphere seem closer in space, we're talking about form, making something 3D, but in order to make it closer, you need to um, give more shading and more value to this sphere. Now, my students, I always invite them to stop. I don't invite them, I tell them. It doesn't work though. But yeah, like a row. Oh, and now I'm drawing with your eraser, with my eraser, with our eraser. Um, I just wanted to make the point that you draw with an eraser. So what I'm doing is um, I am pulling up value. And now I'm on to the next one to make the transition slower. Light to dark. So you can actually hatch with an eraser. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. And notice how the lines of my eraser marks are going in different direction. Okay, the point I was gonna make, sorry, is this, as you do the second, um, the second sphere, you wanna have less shading because you wanna give the impression that it's farther away. So the second concept we're going over in this sketch stretch is space. And the problem that I want all of you to solve is I want you to have one sphere that's closer and one sphere that's smaller. It's getting smaller because it's going farther away, right? And one sphere that is even farther away, it's even smaller. And you wanna have less and less and less shading as you go farther away. There I go drawing in with my eraser, hatching with the eraser, bringing up the thing is, you can always bring away value. That's what I like about a number two Blick pencil, is it's not too hard to bring away the value. Now, surprise, this is actually an underdrawing. We're gonna add more. Okay, so can you see that top sphere? See how I'm hardly working on that top sphere? I'm, I'm gonna go light on it. At least I think I go light on it. We'll see how I do. But you don't wanna overwork stuff that is far away. Again, any sort of lessons, write them down, record them. Okay, now notice how I'm hopping around the page. Don't obsess over one thing and be like, oh my God, it doesn't look like yours. Just keep moving. Changing the direction of my pencil. Going dark to light, pulling stuff up. Okay. Um, don't worry about your circles being perfect, okay? Don't worry about that. You should check out my video on drawing eggs. That might help warm you up to this exercise. So dark to light, light to dark. Pulling up value.
I hope everyone is having a good day. I hope everyone is drawing now and not just going back to sleep, which sometimes happens. You play a video and then you go, you go to sleep. You don't pay attention, but I hope you're moving. I hope you're feeling good on this beautiful day. Notice how I am lightly feathering with the pencil and I'm taking away. Now, I invite you to pause your video. My students post this to Seesaw because we're gonna add more in a second. And you know, you wanna get in the habit of always taking photos of your work in good light and documenting your process because you could get into college with art. And I always have students be like, where's my portfolio? Where are my drawings from the last couple of years? I'm like, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> But also take photos so I can give you a grade. Just in case you run into something, something happens in your house and you can't take a picture. Or you forget, or your dog eats your sketchbook. Okay, so I lightly put in those shadows and then that's where my light's coming from. Draw a quick sun. Now what I'm doing is I am darkening the horizon line, where the horizon line is. That's what's happening right now. And it took me a long time to realize that I really need to teach students to shade the background. There's so many little things that you do that you don't realize that you need to explain, but you do as a teacher. Teaching's the hardest. So make sure you shade the background. I'm adding messy hatching to the shadow. Don't be afraid to be messy, guys. Don't be afraid. And I'm going in and I'm adding another layer because you don't want there to be like a, what you don't want is you don't want there to be a sphere and then there isn't a slow transition. It's like the most common thing I see. But you could still post that. I'll still give you points because you're doing something, you know? But then we could have that conversation about, okay, like let's add more middle grays. Um, so yeah, I'm adding in shading to the background now. So important. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Shading, shading, shading. Shading. Why do we shade the background? Because then your sphere, its light source is more powerful. Okay. Pause the video. Make sure you post. That was an underdrawing. Surprise. I work with, um, in my class lately, I've been working with dual tip markers. Um, we are actually in quarantine. This video series was made during quarantine and um, they are great. And um, I really recommend them as a learning tool. I can't believe it took me forever to ask donors choose and various sources to get these markers for my students. So thank you if you've given these markers. Thank you. My students are very appreciative of you. Um, was that weird? Okay, I am shading the background. So what am I doing? I'm bringing down the value. This is like a dark gray, me medium to dark, pretty dark gray. You wanna save black for the end. And I am just like, this is where the horizon line is where the sky meets the table, where these spheres are going. Makes it seem even more 3D. Now I'm using a very light blue, super light. It looks like on my marker it's 76, just so you know. My students have different kinds, so don't obsess over the numbers. Um, these are the hoo-hoo markers. Really light blue to do a uh, underpainting. Okay guys, I am returning to my messy page of practice and I'm doing ellipses. I'm doing ellipses with the marker, the 72 light blue, because you need, you draw with marker, right? Okay, so the cool thing with these markers, I'm gonna just use the 72 for a while, I think. Notice how I'm changing the direction that I'm going. And I am kind of, you know, pulling in that mid-tone. So it's a little bit more 3D. Like I'm adding another layer 
so we don't get stuck where it's like this like ball with just a weird black shadow. So the blue, the light blue 72 kind of is that mid-tone that makes it appear to be round. It's kind of like the, the cream in the Oreo cookie. Is that a horrible metaphor? Probably. Um, but yeah, turn back to your messy page and just get in the habit of doing quick marks. Look at how many marks have I done with this marker so far. Marks with the marker, marks with the marker, marks with the marker. You do marks with your marker. Guys, it's so funny. Are you one of those art students that like gets nice supplies and then you're like, but I don't want them to run out. So I didn't use them. That is normal of everyone. You just like leave them in a drawer. You're like, I don't want my markers to go away, so I'm just never gonna use them. Guys, it's okay if your markers run out. That's what they're for. Okay, I'm still working with that same light blue and I'm doing an underpainting. And I'm what we're doing with this exercise is we're getting more comfortable. Remember, I wanna do more marks on that first sphere and I wanna do less and less marks. We wanna do less shading as it gets farther away. Okay, so problems there, I feel like there isn't a slow transition anymore. I feel like I got a weird white blob and it doesn't look 3D. So don't freak out, add layers. Now I'm working in a light gray. And notice how my marker is still wet and I'm using that light gray to kind of mix things up. Art is all about layering. Okay, I'm using the thin side. Now you could use the thin side of the marker and just go real fast. Check out my video on um, value scale, exploring lights and darks, and we go over some shading techniques. But I am just going real fast. I should mimic the strokes I'm doing. But look, I'm going all over. I'm dancing with the line. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Going up, going down. Am I entertaining you guys? But I'm just trying to show like how much the direction is changing. Okay, so I think I am using a darker blue at this point. Yep, it looks like it. And I put in that darker blue in the shadow. Still, I'm feeling like there isn't a slow transition in this drawing. And guys, stop, take a picture. And if there's it, that's okay. Okay, I'm coming in with a lighter, lighter, lighter color. Trying to like smooth out that layer like the dark to light, trying to not have it be just like a black blob and have a slower transition to that light source. So I'm adding in more hatching and layers with the light blue. And I think I'm using the thin one because it's like I'm getting close to that light source. So I want to be gentle, gentle. You can add little stipplings, little hatches. Um, there are all sorts of different marks that you can make with a marker. All sorts of different marks. So be free to make them. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, and you want to use everything in your resources. You want to use um, hatching, cross-hatching, stippling with the markers. You're drawing with the marker as if it was a pencil. And the more layers you use, obviously the darker the value. But what's interesting about stippling, which we go over fast in class, but it's actually like a good thing to do with marker because it breaks up that white on the sphere. It's like breaking it up. So now it's going from dark to light a little bit slower. Okay, I'm coming in with that darker gray and I'm using my stippling to break up that difference. You know? Dot, 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 adding in a lot of dots, 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 dots. Okay, adding in more layers. There we go. Adding in the darker gray. So um, I'm using like, you pause the video guys, but I'm using like a middle blue right there. And that's one of the reasons why we did the color value scale. So you could kind of think, okay, which colors are dark, which colors are light? And you use the darker ones in the shadow. You use the lighter ones as you get closer to the light. And I'm using mostly blues here, um, you know, kind of like as an underpainting, hardly touching that back sphere. Ooh, I used, uh, I added some fast hatching with the fat side. 
on the shadow. You guys see that? Okay, what is happening now? I'm coming in with orange. Ooh, that orange is dead. Dead marker on arrival. Guys, don't trip. It's okay if they go dead. Why orange? Orange is the complement of blue. Red is the complement of green. Purple is the complement of yellow. Why, why use the complement? Why use the opposite color? Orange is the opposite. Look, notice I'm not tripping. I'm using a dead marker. I'm not tripping. Just use it. Use it till it dies. Um, why use the opposite? Because of contrast. Yes? You want that sphere, okay, that we're focusing on space and form in this video. You want it to come forward. You want the sphere to come out in space. So, um, yeah. Like it needs to be 3D. Okay, I'm going in, making it all lighter. Painting, painting, painting. Painting with the markers. I switched to yellow and I put yellow on the light source because, you know, I want there to be a sun. Because I want, you know, I want, and now I'm using purple. Wow. I'm using this dark, pretty purple to kind of show where the rays of light are coming from. Because this is my page, this is my page, and it's for me to remember how important it is to have a consistent light source. So I love this exercise because, and I'm painting on top of that value. Remember, you could do markers on top of markers because it teaches us like in order, in an art piece, like if I'm doing something, I'm drawing something 3D, the light needs to be coming from the same direction. That's one of the things that makes it look 3D. So adding in other layers right there. I'm using a much better yellow that's working and I'm just kind of evening out that value. So yes, yellow is not the opposite of blue, but it's the opposite of purple. And it's the opposite, it's like a warm color. So my advice, ooh, that looks nice. Oh, don't worry about the markers going through the page. Okay, notice how I'm coming in and I'm making a straight line as I get close and then I'm going up to the edge. This is what, why do we use warm colors juxtaposed with cool colors? It really helps to make something called a hard boundary. Hard boundary, meaning like that is the end of the sphere. I know that's the end of the sphere. I'm totally clear that that is the end of the sphere, miss. I get it. And that's a good thing to do because then that tells the eye like, okay, that's a separate thing. Like that sphere is not part of the table. That table is not part of the sphere because the table, that's a warm color. And the sphere, that's a cool color. They are different things. And that really helps us to understand that that like blue ball is like 3D. It is sitting on the table. It is not part of the table. And now it's popping forward at us. Okay, my son's awake, so one second. I may have to get him breakfast. He'll come and he'll visit us. So, you know, I'm having fun. I'm exploring with adding some red in the shadow. Um, you know, just trying things. This is a space to try things. Do you want some of this, baby? Come, wanna come and talk to the YouTube students, the students of the YouTube sphere of AJR? Don't want to talk to the world. You may think that looks weird. But, oh my gosh, I'm probably making eating sounds. Sorry. But I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to layer it in. Okay, notice how I'm doing less shading as we get far away. So I've really, you want to spend the majority of your time on that sphere in the front. Okay, so I'm stopping, I'm looking at my work, I'm thinking what else can I add? I'm adding some light gray to that sphere that's in the distance. Adding light gray to the sphere that's in the distance. Drinking some sparkling water. Make sure you hydrate. Make sure you have your snacks when you're doing art. Nothing like snacks. Hi. Say hi to everyone. Hi. Hi. You want to sit on my lap? I'm a mother. I'm a mother. 
Um, he's getting a chair. He's going to teach with us. What a crazy world we live in, being a mother, being a teacher. Okay, um, yeah, so I'm just continuing to paint my background purple. Purple is the opposite of yellow. My table's yellow. I'm creating that contrast, creating that juxtaposition. Why don't you just talk while you're painting? Why do you take a video of your painting and then take a video of your talk? I, I'm adding some stippling right now. I just want to point out to everyone. That is a great question, my young son. I tried to talk while I was drawing and it was too hard. And what I've learned over the years, everyone, is it's really hard to teach art. And part of the process is it's really hard to figure out how to explain what you're doing. So I do it in two steps and it's been working out a lot better. I think my videos are confusing when I try to do too many things at once. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Kind oh, of. Kind of. I'm always kind of making sense. Guys, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm getting a pen. You could use any kind of pen to draw. Um, why a pen? A pen is a great way to create shading. So I recommend a black pen. Um, my students got a pen during supply distribution. A pen. Why a pen? Because it's so hard. It, like pens for students is so expensive because they're a lot, you know, it's hard to get all the students a pen, but I'm just reviewing the shading techniques. So you could pause your video before you start drawing that with the pen. Shading, no dark delight. Mm -hmm. And you can go ahead and you can review the different shading techniques on an opposite page. Hatching, that right there is cross hatching when you do X's and you're gonna practice those, right Jacob? And then stippling. And why am I showing you that? Because it's like, if you're hesitating before you're drawing something, you may be like, oh my God, I'm not going to do that. I don't know what <sighs> I'm doing. And now I have more confidence going in. So why a pen? The detail quality that I get with the pen. Is very detailed. Yeah, it's very detailed and it helps to break up the the values in the sphere. It's darker than pencil. Yes, exactly. My son is right. Uh, the pen is darker than pencil. And by adding those cross hatching, I want you to pay attention. Notice how my pen marks are round. Okay, they're round right now. They're three to the D. My pen marks are three D right now. And that's important because, um, sorry, my pen marks are curvy. And that's important. The lines need to be curvy. So we're gonna do another video that talks about line direction and going in different direction and why that's so important when drawing things because the sphere is curvy. So if you're drawing something, you want the lines to go in the direction that the surface is going. And so that's why it's so important to practice ellipses then you're more confident with doing How those come curvy the shadows lines. Don't have to be curvy. How come the shadows don't need to be curvy? You know, that's a great question. I think technically we should put a sphere on a table and see if it's curvy. We should do that experiment. Um, but that brings up the point that, you know, your drawing doesn't need to look exactly how a sphere would. I'm adding a little bit of hatching onto the sphere but your drawing doesn't need to look exact or be perfect or anything because this is an exploration we're exploring form and space you more on the last one. i added more stipples on the last one i think it's because i feel like the hatching and all that detail work brings it forward but yeah what i'm trying to do mr sun is i'm trying to have more shading on the first one and less shading on the one farther away because if I have more shading on the first one, that's gonna come forward. Okay, I'm also doing a line on the outside and I'm adding curvy hatchy, curvy well, hatchy, curvy I'm hatchy. Trying to have less shading on the one farthest. Great question. Um, earlier in the video, I was talking about how um, the if you have less shading on something, it make it's like it's disappearing. It's called something called atmospheric perspective. So like the more shading you have on something, 
the closer it's gonna seem, the more texture. Cause look, do you see more detail on this as it gets closer, right? But as it gets far away, you would see less detail. No, no, this gets more blurry when it gets so close and so close. And mm -hmm. So close, so close, so close. Well, trust me on this one. Trust me on this one. Maybe not like super close, like you're over your eye. Okay, add more hatching. Adding more hatching. Okay, so yeah, I've been using a pen and um, it's been breaking up the value, gives it a lot of contrast. Notice how I didn't touch the black marker yet. I have not messed with the black marker yet at all because black is powerful, but the pen is kind of like a way to slowly introduce black into the drawing. A lot of artists never do black in their artwork. They're like, that's too strong. I'm just gonna use burnt sienna and blue. Okay, so I'm making the page prettier at this point. Just burnt sienna and blue, why not gray? Gray's not bad. Oh yeah, yeah, artists use gray, yeah. But like in order to create a lot of contrast, burnt sienna and blue will make like something close to black, but not black black. Can I make poop brownies this morning? Yeah, you wanna go do that? Seven-year-olds love to say, the word poop. No, it's from Dogman. Poop it's from brownies. Dogman. We support Dogman in this family. Dogman, this YouTube channel. But it turned into Cat Kid. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing, this is why I wake up early and I film. As you can see. <gasps> okay, so we're just adding in more. I'm feeling good. I want to point out that the sphere is light. Like the sphere has an area of white on it. That's something that I want to point out. I can out. barely see anything in the background. Can you, Jacob, can you like slow, like talk a little less for now? Let me finish this up with the students. I love you so much. Why don't you sit there and eat that? So what I'm doing is I'm doing my marker. I'm adding another dark value on top of that. And I'm doing my marker in the direction that the light is going. Notice how I'm layering marker on top of each other. Um, and I'm just getting comfortable with doing lines with the marker. Now that blue. Looks cartoon. The top part looks cartoony. And the bottom part looks more real. Oh, the top part looks more cartoony. And the bottom part looks more real. Probably because I'm adding more shading. Okay, but yeah, I'm just adding layers. And markers can create cross hatching. Okay, um, you may not have white out or white paint. Um, I am planning on handing this out during the next supply distribution. We'll see if it works out. But this is white paint and I'm just adding dots of white paint on top of the sphere because, you know, you need to, I guess I'm making the point that there needs to be an area in the sphere that's really, really light. So you're adding like little dots of white paint. And if you don't have any white, now I'm adding stippling of white to kind of break up that transition. So it's slowly going from dark to light. So dab, 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 stipple, stipple, stipple. If you, if you don't have an area, ooh, I'm even adding a white to the sun. I made that decision. That kind of creates visual balance. White, if everything in the drawing is colored, white is visually heavy. It becomes powerful. Ooh, I'm adding those rays. So white and black, like those, those are your powerful things. And you need to have white and black. You need to have the lightest and the darkest value somewhere on your page if it's gonna look 3D. So I'm adding that in. What are you doing? Those. That's my hat. I know. My mom steals my clothing. It's true, you know? You, you wear what you can yeah. as a mom. She steals my hat, she steals my glasses. Mm -hmm. Now I'm adding in white dots to that back. I feel like I just overworked that back sphere. And I'll steal her thrift box. I just overworked it. I'm adding in like white dots. 
And now I feel like that back sphere doesn't look 3D at all, but I'm not going to trip. I'm just going to like look at it later. Maybe I'll add more detail later and fix it up. Maybe I won't because guess what? You got to post this and you got to get it done, guys. Yeah, I don't think you should have added those things. Yeah, I know. I know. But you do what you can. You do the best that you can. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. If you're enrolled in my class, obviously you are posting this to the seesaw. So you could turn in, you could get some points. Um, make sure it's all posted and you know, pause the video throughout and go back. You could do this exercise as many times as you want. If you don't have white out, don't trip. Okay, just don't. You can bring up that value with an eraser, but make sure you leave a light area of your sphere. Thank you for watching this video on form and space. I hope everyone's safe. Bye. Say bye, Jacob. Okay, don't. Okay, bye.